This AI revolution is moving so quickly that I've started writing the date, the month and the year on everything I do because it changes day to day. The, the evolution is going so fast. The models are coming out at such huge speed. I'm filming today on October the 23rd, 2021. And China has just released this massive model with like a petabyte of training data reduced to five terabytes. It's five times bigger than anyone else has done. And it's just, it's just crazy. <laughs> this week, Burning Man announced their 2022 theme. And it's really quite amazing. They're calling it Waking Dreams. I love this concept. I love this concept of bringing intuition and bringing the subconscious out into life. And they're some of the best people to do it. At least 12 people were involved with the design of this amazing graphic. There were at least five photographers, six graphic designers, and a final designer. His name is Tanner Boga. They've used elements like, you can see there, the dinosaur bones and other bones the entire player and the mountains in the background. They've got the eyeball or the Mars molecule. It's a lot of different pieces. I wonder if it took maybe a hundred man hours to complete end to end, including the original photographs and uh, taking that through Photoshop and tweaking it all the way through to something that's print ready and press ready for Burning Man to be proud of and to release as part of their theme. Then Steve, Instagram handle at I bear it all ran Tanner's final graphic and a prompt sentence, which he hasn't revealed yet through um, any, any medium yet, but I could guess what it might be. He ran all this through an AI and generated a completely new graphic. Here it is. Hallucinative, trippy, 100% generated by AI. Maybe a few seconds of work writing his prompt sentence and compare that with the 100 hours that was required to create the original graphic. Here's both of them side by side. Pretty cool. As you know, image generation isn't my focus area. I've been obsessed and narrowly focused on large language models for quite a while now. You might have seen the Leader AI series. There's an Aurora AI series that uses a different language model or different language models. And in general, I just love seeing how we're bringing in all these huge data sets, tying them together, pre-training with maybe $10 million worth of compute time and spitting out an AI that can essentially do anything. I'm not saying that to exaggerate. Go and have a look at Leader beating Watson or reading subconscious uh, uh, non-verbal hints or reading body language. Amazing. And you will have seen my media interviews about the large language model GPT-3 generating this book, Pharmaco AI, with the help of Kedrick Alado McDowell from Google Brain. He co-wrote it, so it's about 50-50. And GPT-3 in this book is just incredible. The, using a large language model to generate text is just fascinating. Uh, it's an entire book that really, again, was done with not very much input from a human. It's all generated by, by AI. So the same day that Burning Man released this incredible theme graphic, I received a comic book in the mail. <laughs> it finally arrived. Um, it was released in August 2021. I believe it to be the very first proper book completely generated by AI end-to-end, -end, including graphics. Now, there have been some others all the way back to the 1990s, but this is the latest of the greatest using the latest of the greatest models. And we'll talk about the detail in a moment. But for now, I just want you to see how incredibly beautiful this thing is. Written, drawn completely by artificial intelligence. The author's name is Adam Neiman. And he says it took less than one and a half days to generate this book. Also, he can't draw. So, <laughs> so it is completely 100% done by AI. Here's a look inside the book. My favorite page is at the back here and how beautiful is that? On the left, you can see mountains, maybe a tree, the sky, the ocean. What else can you see in there? 
Let's jump into the technical details. So we'll start with the fact that Adam actually used GPT-3 to do all the text in here. And this was the prompt sentence that he used. What would you say to a comic book reader immersed in a dream world designed by an AI? As simple as that. He gives that to the platform behind Lita called GPT-3 and it created all the text throughout the comic book. So he's not done any work there except for that single sentence, which is a question. Uh, I don't think it's a fantastic prompt, but who am I to criticize here? It's uh, giving it, you know, it's putting it in a question format and it's not really giving it enough context or enough creativity to be able to play around with it. But anyway, he's obviously created something that's really, really cool. Keep in mind that this one is pretty easy to understand. If you want to know more about GPT-3 or the data sets or the language models behind it, you can have a look at my work on really analyzing what's inside those data sets, including the top 10 things that are in the data set behind, or training data behind the GPT-3 language model. All right, so we got the text out of the way. How did he do each of these incredible graphics. Where did these images come from? Why do they look like they're natural, but they've got some sort of supernatural element on them? Let's jump in. So there are a couple of funky acronyms here and maybe they'll be in our vocabulary, maybe not. I thought it would be worthwhile to mention them anyway, because you know, a year or two ago, we didn't know what the iPhone 13 Pro Max was. And we use weird acronyms in our lives anyway. Radar, ATM, BYO, RSVP. This one's a bit bigger. We'll start with what I call the writer of the images. And this one is called VQGAN. Stands for Vector Quantized Generative Adversarial Network and it converts text into images. So it's taken the text on each page of the comic book and it's created an image from that text. Really, really cool. The second part, I'm gonna call the reader or the judge. It's called clip, contrastive language image pre-training. And what it does is it looks at what VQGAN generates and it checks it to see if it's close enough to the text. So it essentially converts that image to text and then compares it with the original. And it can do this many, 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 many times and very, very, very quickly. So you might go through thousands of iterations to get to a perfect image like you see in the comic book. This is all bleeding edge stuff. So GPT-3 isn't even 18 months old yet. Uh, GAN has probably been around since 2014. V VQGAN is more recent. And the combination of VQGAN and CLIP is really new. OpenAI just released CLIP this year in 2021. Also worth noting that every single technology used to generate this comic book is publicly available. So he's not doing anything special that you can't do uh, with a bit of work, there's Google Colab notebooks available for you to go and play around with this if you've got the drive to do it. And he says, Adam Neiman says in the back of the book, there must certainly be much more advanced AIs in research labs that are capable of doing much better. I'm absolutely floored by this one. I think this is a really concrete example of the cool part the thousand X part of what AI is doing towards the end of 2021. I can hold it in my hand. I can see the images. I can see the storyline, which is completely cohesive and coherent. And uh, it's, it's tangible. It's something that you can grab and play with. Uh, you remember that I have spoken a lot about this first book, this GPT-3 book, but there's something about <laughs> the way that we bind images and text together that's simply mind blowing. Consider what's happening right now. AI is creating better text and images than a human. It's doing it maybe a thousand times faster. It's augmenting comic book artists. It's augmenting authors. I can see it supporting paralegals, TV presenters, biologists, risk consultants, audio engineers. That list, if I kept going, would be thousands of different industries, jobs, occupations, careers, fields where AI is 
uplifting, augmenting the human being, and hopefully soon, augmenting us directly. But super cool to see what it's already doing in different industries. This is definitely the most exciting time to be alive. You're living through the AI revolution and it's happening so fast. I'm really keen to see what happens November 2021, December 2021, and January seems to be a cool time for some of these big labs to release stuff. So let's have a look, and it's only a few weeks away, what happens in January 2022. Adam Neiman, if you're out there, I'd love to interview you. Your website's down, your Twitter's empty, your email bounces. Um, come and have a conversation with us about your thoughts on your own book, because I think you've got some insights here that I've guessed at, but there should be some cool stuff that you can link us into. There you go, you're up to date as of October 2021. I'm really excited to see what the future looks like and what happens in the next few months. Between now and then, I might see you at Burning Man in 2022. Do you know someone in the media who can spread the word about the rapid progress of AI? All major news outlets would be helpful. They can grab a media pack at lifearchitect.ai slash media.